Hey, I'm Jeff Hickman. I'm out here at my cabin on the river fishing winter steelhead with Lewis Cahill. Um, we're in Oregon and we have some high water conditions, so I'm going to tie a fly that uh, I'd like to fish tomorrow. Um, pink and purple, popular colors for winter steelhead. Um, this is this fly pattern is sort of a, a variation of an Idlewild fly pattern of mine called the Sid Fishes. And uh, this one just is a little more full, a little, little more natural than the uh, commercial, commercially tied Sid Fishes. So, um, and in uh, pink and purple. Get a nice thread base started here. I like to do a nice solid foundation on that hook shank. The hook I'm using is just a, a really cheap long shanked eagle claw hook that I bought in bulk um, and I have a zillion of them. Um, don't remember the number of it but it's not real important. It's just a straight eye hook because we're not actually using the hook we're just using the shank. Um, we're going to do a stinger style fly here. I like to use a little Maxima Chameleon 30 pound because it's nice and stiff. Um, I just eyeball a little loop, trim it with my new nose pliers, and then I eyeball about how big I want it. I want to make sure that uh, my hook will fit in there, like so. And wrap this down nice and solid. I like to wrap it all the way up to the cone and then back. Back up there. And then I fold that maximum chameleon over itself and wrap it on back. Looks like I got a little extra here, so I'll trim that off. But I find if you just double it over and really lock it down with a thread, I've never had one of these loops slip out. Use a little ice dub, holographic purple on here to make a nice little ball for the butt. What that butt does is uh, we'll flare out our, our marabou here. Um, I like to tie the marabou in tip first. And I'm just going to do a few wraps of this marabou right in front of that ball of dubbing. So that way that dubbing ball just flares out the marabou, gives it a little bit larger profile. Round that off nice and smooth. Want a nice smooth base here. <clears throat> and tie in a little copper ribbing here that I have on a bobbin. Right there and just let them sit for a second. Get a little holographic flashaboo. This is fuchsia, is the color. Get that started there. 
And I'll put it all the way back, wrap my thread forward. And then I'm going to slowly wrap this forward over on itself. And I use my fingers to just try to pull all the strands tight as I go. So otherwise it can be hard to keep the tension on all the strands of this flashaboo. I'm just trying to keep as level of a body here as possible. Then I wrap the copper wire, reverse. Copper wire just gives it a nice look and also makes it a little bit more durable. That way the first fish you catch on the, the fly doesn't just shred all the flashaboo. Tie that off real good. Then I'm going to take some ice wing fiber. This is fluorescent hot pink. Just pull a little clump out. And I just like to twist it onto my thread like dubbing. to just twist it a little bit. That twist helps hold it nice and tight. That way you can make a nice big ball. I'm going to throw a little extra on it just to fatten it up a little bit. Then I take the teaser and just tease that out. This teaser is just a little wooden stick with some stick-on Velcro. Does a pretty good job of giving it a bad hair day. Ostrich. Just a little clump. this guy a wing, get it positioned like I want it. Then I'm going to take some more of the flashaboo, this holographic flashaboo. Halfway, just tie it on right in the middle. That way, I can then fold it back over, tie it down. I got a little bit of flash in that wing. Yeah. 
Then I will take some strung guinea. I like to tie it in tip first. So just peel that back a little bit. And strung guinea feather. This is a dyed pink. Lock in that tip. Trade tools here. Hackle players might make this a little easier. Notice my uh, special fly tying finger here. Um, when you you know when you tie like this, it can get a little crazy, so it's best to be cautious. I actually sliced my finger right before tying this fly. Convenient. And I like to use just a little teeny tiny bit of ice dub there. I put it in behind the cone. Just that little bit there. And uh, gives it a nice appearance and gives me something to cinch this thread down into when I use the whip finisher. Then I'm going to take the fly out of the vise and I'm going to clip off that hook. I use my needle nose and eye protection because this thing can go flying. I actually just like to hold it. Clip off that little hook there. And this is an important little step that is often overlooked. I, I like to take that right there where you clip it. It can often have a sharp little burr. I take a keep a hook file handy and just go over it with the hook file. Just to round it out so you don't have any sharp burrs which could cut your loop in the heat of battle. <clears throat> and there are my hooks. So I like to use an owner size 2 for winter steel heading since uh, this is going to be my fly of choice for tomorrow. Pinch that loop. Work it into that eye. And make sure it's the right way. I like the hook point to ride up. There's the wing. Put on. And there you have it. Kind of a little variation of a Idlewild pattern called a Sid Ficious. Um, just a little more full for the higher water conditions that we have tomorrow. So, hope to show it to you in the fish mouth.